There's a reason some people seem to succeed time after time, no matter what they do. It's not luck, it's not money, it's not good looks. They've just learned how to become the main character of their lives. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can become the main character of your life and the exact steps you need to take to get there. Why would you want to become the main character of your life? The world works in systems built by other people just like you. And to get the most out of life, you have to build your own systems. You can bend the world to your will by figuring out what you care the most about and working together with others to solve it. When you bring those people together, they see you as the leader and the person that can help them solve their problem. For me, my big why is to make sure that reading is never varied learning for anyone. And the system I organize to do that is Speechify. I've really struggled with reading all of my life. My dad actually had to read my books for me. And I figured out that audiobooks was an amazing way for me to learn. And then I just decided that I needed to be able to read everything in the internet. And I taught myself how to code and I built a tool that would just text the speech, the internet for me. And then I had Speechify and Speechify lets me listen to 300,000 words per week. And so for a lot of people with dyslexia or any type of disability, it's easy to say life is unfair. The system is stacked against me. So I should check out my parents. They're mean. They don't understand. Or you can say, I don't care that I have to walk up this hill and it's a steeper hill and I have a bigger backpack. I'm just going to walk and I'm going to walk better than everybody else. I'm going to run. And so this is what I decide to do in my life sometimes. There are things that are very difficult and I don't care. I just go beast mode. So what does it feel like being the main character of your life? The most important distinction between the main character and an NPC is the main character is not limited by the rules that govern NPCs. I believe that I can do anything, even things that are physically impossible, given enough time. For example, doing a backflip. I just need to practice and not stop. And so that means that I also don't care what other people think. The other thing that I do constantly as a main character is if I'm alone, my brain dumps an insane amount of positive self-thought into itself. My brain doesn't have any limitations. It believes it can be anything it wants. It can make anything it wants. It's like a child. There's no limitations. So it just goes. And the thing about people who are crazy enough to believe that they can do something that is impossible is that those are the people who eventually do it. Lastly, being the main character of your own life is just fun. Many studies were done on what makes people happy in their job. And one of the most important attributes, if not the most important one, is having control over your life. Having the ability to chart your own path is critical to feeling self-actualized. If you're the main character, it just means that you hold that value very close to your heart and you don't let that agency away from you and you don't let other people's thoughts or opinions or limitations limit you. Now let's talk about how to become the main character of your life. There's four main points. First, figure out what you care the most about. And the best way to do that is writing. So the first time I did this, I think I was 15. My mom told me, hey, Cliff, it's a full moon. You get 30 moon wishes. And I was like, okay. And I wrote down my 30 moon wishes. And then I collapsed them into three folders that were the highest level three wishes that I would ask if I had a genie. And then those became my three top goals in life. And that led to me understanding myself more. And then once I do that, I'm able to drill in really deep and go do the things that actually make me happy. So for example, going out to a club is not something that gives me any energy whatsoever. It is not aligned with my values. Neither does drinking alcohol, neither does smoking weed. Exercising, yes. Spending time with loved ones, yes. Making new friends, yes. Learning from books, yes. I love learning, for example. I love playing music and, and writing new music, music. Even though it's hard, it's difficult for me to focus. I really enjoy it. And so I just focus, I make myself focus. Step number two, reach out to the top 10 people who are making the most progress towards that goal, whoever they are. So one thing I do all the time is I send DMs to random people on Instagram or cold emails to people or I message people on LinkedIn. And if I find someone that I'm inspired by, I message them. Typically, by the way, those people also believe that they are the main characters of their own lives because that is the reason why they became exceptional. If you send a message that is polite and less than four sentences, people typically will respond to you. And so you go and you make friends with those people. And so what I do is I'm really into fitness. I've messaged all the people who I think have like the best body and I, I didn't understand how they built their arm to be that size. And so I learned. I messaged the best rappers that I really enjoy their music and have them respond to me and you know sometimes even fly to wherever they are and record with them in their studio. I messaged the best authors. Like my favorite author is Brandon Sanderson from Way of Kinks. So last week I went and I spent a bunch of time with him in his house and talked to him about his vision for the world. I do the same thing with the founders I admire the most. It just is more fun to live life with the people that you admire, you spend time with, and guess what? The more time you spend with people, the more you learn how to become like them. Step number three, set goals and make small but actionable steps so you can consistently make progress towards your goals. Let's say I'm 110 pounds and I want to be 190 pounds. And so I'll read a lot about it and I'll realize that the best way to do that is to do compound lifts and eat 3000 calories a day for two years. And so I'm like, cool, I make a Google sheet. It has every day planned and I know exactly how much bench press, how much squatting, how much, you know, barbell curl, whatever I'm going to do. And I count my macros and I keep myself accountable to other people. And I just, I just do it. 
And I also set up systems that make it so that I can't lose. Point number four, and the most important one, make sure what you're doing is what you actually want and not what your environment is pressuring you to do. I can't emphasize this enough. And especially for cultures from outside the United States, you know, people like me who are Jewish or people who are Asian or people who are, you know, religious backgrounds. Do not let your parents dictate what you do with your life. Your parents have amazing values. And I have a rule, by the way, if my dad and I have a disagreement, 95% of the time, I will go with what my dad says because my dad is a very smart man and he has a lot more experience than me. And often it's been the case that two, three, four years later, I realized my dad was right. Sometimes though, the world is new. There's different technologies. I spent so much time building stuff with AI today. Like that didn't exist before. Same thing for Instagram and in the internet, like the world fundamentally is different and your life is different. And by the way, most important to realize we are all so privileged in comparison to our parents. But with that privilege comes an opportunity to have an even more wonderful and exceptional life and make sure that it is rooted in good values. Don't do things, don't wear it in like fancy shoes. Don't buy a gold chain just because your friends are doing it. But if you read about your history and like you're inspired, but this is like one beautiful piece of art, yes, then that makes perfect sense. One author that I really admire in this area is Friedrich Nietzsche. And he wrote a book called Thus Spoke Zarathustra. But he has this concept of the Ubermensch in German, the Superman. And he's a Superman because of the ability to assign values. So the Ubermensch does not take his or her values from the pulpit or the Pope or the parents or society that derive them for themselves. And that's what you should strive to do as a main character. And the way you do that, again, is by writing and connecting with your inner self. I sound so spiritual, but it's true. It's spiritual in a very, very good way. And figure out what your heart truly desires. And if you don't know what you desire, Here's the trick for how to figure it out. Read books, read a lot of biographies specifically and figure out who you admire. Go volunteer to help improve other people's lives and just do things that put you outside your comfort zone. If you do these three things and you listen to at least 30 audiobooks a year, I guarantee you within three years, you figure it out. And with that, happy listening. If you haven't downloaded Speechify yet, I'm gonna take a second to recommend that you do. Speechify is a piece of software that I built when I was in college and it's fundamentally changed my life. If you don't use Speechify, I'm gonna say three things. Number one, I can't emphasize enough how much reading will make you a better person and it'll help you figure out what your flame is. So download Speechify on your iPhone and upload a complicated PDF or just, you know, listen to the New York Times or TechCrunch. But listen, it'll change your life. Number two, reading takes a lot more cognitive load than listening. So try listening. And most importantly, coach yourself how to listen fast. Once you're able to listen fast, it is a superpower. The average American reads at 200 words per minute and I listen to most things at 700 words per minute. And if you're wondering how I went from this to this intellectually, it's Speechify. Happy listening.